throughout this video series, you'll continue to hear about the importance of advocacy. A well-structured advocacy plan that is actively followed by all trustees may make a significant difference in your library's revenue. In this video, you'll hear success stories from people who were able to generate additional funds for their library and surprise quite a few people in the process. Carla Marsteller explains why decision makers need to hear from library trustees. I really feel that their role is, is an important one um, and that their involvement is vital to the success of the libraries. Uh, you know, when a paid employee shows up at a municipal meeting, it's seen as their job. It's not really, the impact is just not the same as it is whenever someone who's volunteering their time, given freely to the community, and who has a passion for it, shows up and has something to say. And that role is something that you can't duplicate in any other way. And trustees are uniquely able to do that. The reason I say that is because they, they come to regular meetings with the library, they're engaged with the library, they know what is going on with the library, but yet they're still freely giving of their time. So they take the information that they garner by participating with the library and their community involvement, their, um, well, the, the simple fact that they're a neighbor, you know, that they, the municipal official that they may be talking to might be the guy who lives next door. And they take that information and they can build a relationship and when you put the two together, it equals success, and that success usually equals additional funding for libraries, and it allows us to do what we are here to do, and that is reach out and provide the information and the connection that people need in the community. Advocacy and fundraising are critical responsibilities of the entire board. Trustees should be intimately up to their noses involved in fund development. I think that's one of their primary responsibilities as a director, uh, or as a trustee, I should say. Um, ideally, the trustees come from strength in the community, from many different industries, with knowledge of the movers and shakers in their home communities, and can very effectively advocate for um, funds coming to the library from industry, from local government, from individuals, from about every source that's out there. That, I really do think, is one of the primary responsibilities of a trustee. Regular communication helps maintain positive relationships within the community and generate the best results. Janice Trapp says advocacy is important enough to be on every meeting agenda. I think by making it a, uh, an ongoing uh, process, not just an ad hoc um, activity that we undertake when we are having a, a budget cut at the state or local level. I think we have to be very strategic about advocacy. I think we need to talk about it at every board meeting. I think we need to have an advocacy plan for the year, just the, the way we have a strategic plan. At times, advocacy may be as simple as writing a note. Uh, last November, um, Almost my whole board attended our district trust institute and we learned something very simple but we think it's practical to do and a personal note to the letter we sent to the community. So this March we did a letter writing campaign and my whole board gathered together. We um, spent hours and everybody added a personal note to their friends, neighbors, the family, uh, relatives and uh, as a result we got 25% return and we were just uh, so delighted and so surprised to see the result. Other times advocacy efforts should follow a more formal approach that is targeted to certain people. We do see the importance of going out to the community meetings like uh, the borough council meeting and also the lion club meeting because uh, when we go there instead of just go there to ask for the money. We try to be there um, on a pretty regular base and to tell them what the library does, what programs we offer, but also we will also say we have some needs for the, let's say, children's books or maybe some furniture. And to our surprise, we do get the um, appreciation from those um, different organizations. 
Our local Lion Club actually made a four-year commitment after they heard our presentation about the children's programs. So they would uh, continue to fund us for four years. The Palmyra Public Library trustees also make a unified regular effort to reach municipal officials. At regularly scheduled municipal meetings, the director and board representatives gave a brief update on library programs and services. At one of the meetings, they requested financial support. We asked them to share their advocacy success story and were delighted to find that it was difficult for them to choose just one success story to tell. We actually have a couple of really fabulous success stories. Um, we have three municipalities that we serve and because we go to their meetings on a regular basis and advocate, we now have a library tax in one of those three municipalities and that has been a huge success. That tax was passed without a referendum because the municipal officials understood that the value of, of what the library was. And also, after it was passed, there was virtually no complaining from the community. One person showed up at the meeting and turned out that person didn't even live in that municipality. So it was a, it was a clear sign that the community agreed and supported what they had done. The other success story that we have seen is that when we did a survey several years back, um, we asked our municipal officials in our other municipalities what they felt about the library. And the actual statement that was made is that we don't need a library anymore, we have the internet. And there are people out there who really still believe that. And so we embarked on the campaign to change their mind. We were determined that they needed to fall in love with the library. And if they did that, the rest of it would be easy. And so over the past couple of years, we have gone on a regular basis to their meetings. We have build a relationship with them that has changed everything. They now speak very highly of us in the community and it has changed our bottom line dramatically. We've seen over a 50% increase in our funding in some municipalities and overall we've seen more than a 100% increase in local government income. And that speaks for itself. What a success it has been. Well worth every moment that we've given to it and then some. Don Bliss, president of the Palmyra Public Library's Board of Trustees, summarized his advice to trustees who will attend municipal or township meetings. Uh, be early, be brief in your presentation, and stay for the entire meeting, period. Funding may come from a variety of sources, including federal, state, and local government, as well as corporations and individuals. Each funding source is different, so it's important for trustees to meet with their library director to plan the presentations. What you're about to see is a typical conversation to prepare a trustee for such a meeting. Thanks for coming in today. We're going to get our advocacy visits up and rolling this week. And since you're um, new to this, I wanted to make sure that you feel comfortable with what we're doing and what our message is and what it is that we're really trying to get across. Well, thank you so much for meeting with me today. I I'm, I'm actually am feeling a little bit nervous about meeting with these officials and, and could certainly use some pointers. One of the things that it's important for you to remember is that you're a representative of the library and you're also a taxpayer. So really, you, are, um, you, know, you have a really good reason to go in and talk to all of our elected officials on behalf of the library because they're using our tax dollars to help support the services that we're um, promoting. So, so I'm here as not just as a trustee, but an actual stakeholder. Absolutely. And I think as a trustee, you have a really important role to play because you really represent the community in a way that a professional librarian maybe doesn't. Um, an elected official can look at a professional librarian and say, you have a stake in this because that's where your salary comes from. But as a trustee, you can really represent the needs and the interests of the community. And you can talk about the kinds of things that really make a difference, that where the library really makes a difference. Because I'm not a professional, because I'm a volunteer, that there are, it affects the ways that the elected officials will hear your message. 
And speaking of messages, we do like to make sure that we have a consistent message. We want you to be yourself when you go in and talk to, to our elected officials. But at the same time, we have some points that we'd really like to, to put across. And we put together a packet for you, and some of this you can leave behind on your visit. Um, but it gives you an idea of the kinds of things that we really want to talk about, some of the points that we want to make. These are things that are really important to us as we go out this year and make our visits. And I'd like you to look at it and see if the, any of these are things that, are, um, that you don't feel comfortable with or that perhaps you need more information on. Well, how about the funding? That's, that's always a challenge. Funding is always a challenge, and funding is a challenge regardless of, of who it is that you're going to visit. Um, one of the things that you will always hear from an elected official is that there are more mouths to feed than there is food to give out. So your job really is to try to make a case for why it is that the library deserves those dollars and a good portion of those dollars that they have available to distribute. So, so can you give me any suggestions? I, I... I don't even know, how do you address them? Well, have, have, do you know anything about these guys? I mean, have you ever been in their, in their company before? Um, not really. Well, you know, I think that, that he went to the university at the same time as you did. Oh, really? I believe so. So that's a good thing for you to begin to talk about. You mm -hmm. can talk as fellow alumni and, and you know, really begin a conversation that way. And then ease your way into um, the information about the library. Gives you a chance to, you know, kind of soften things up a little bit and, and, and you know, just make some connections. It's always really good if we have somebody in there who's got some sort of connection with, with, um, with those elected officials because they are humans just like you sure. and me. They live in our neighborhoods. They go to the same schools that we do. They send their kids to the same playgrounds that our kids play at. So it's good if we can, can make some of those human connections before we begin. So remember their people. Remember that they're people, absolutely. I also think it's really important that you go in with a positive attitude. We're really not there to complain. We're not there to, you know, to make them defensive. We're really there to say, we think libraries are important. We appreciate whatever you can do for us, um, but here's why we think libraries are so important. We're really not there to, to give them a hard time. We want to make sure that they can hear us. Often if you put somebody on the defensive, they stop listening. What are the, the most important things for me to cover in this meeting? We've, we've put together a packet for you, and here's a list that you can, can look at. These are really the most important items that we want to cover in this visit. Keep in mind that this isn't the only visit that we're going to make to them. This is, you know, this is an opportunity for you to get in there and have a chance to say hello, um, talk a little bit about the library, talk about your personal reaction to the library, give them a pitch about why it is you think they should support the library, and especially thank them for the work that they've done for us over the years. Um, look for opportunities to say, we appreciate the things that you have done. And keep in mind that for you, this is an opportunity to meet these folks. Now, when you're out in the community, I know that you're going to be at meetings where you're going to see them again. Mm -hmm. And you now have an opportunity to go up to them and say, hi, remember me? We got to meet in your office a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago you're going to have that chance to, to get in there and, and they're going to remember you. That's what good, good politicians do that. They remember a face, they remember a name, and they will remember your cause. And your cause is the library. So, um, so this is just your introductory visit. It's, you're not done yet. You're going to be doing this over and over and over. To summarize, trustees will get the best results if they set an example by making a meaningful personal contribution, coordinate municipal visits with friends, patrons, and even children to share their stories about the library's value, devote some time each month to plan and conduct advocacy efforts, connect with decision makers monthly to keep them informed about your library and its benefits, yet request financial support only once a year. Thank those whose contributions enable you to serve your community with materials, programs, services, and expertise. Thank you for all the funding and support that you have given the library and all the books and materials so that we can learn and read. Thank you for the libraries we all built.